A Poincaré map, also known as a first return map, is a type of map that's helpful for analyzing a system that appears to have periodic behavior. Consider the example system that I've drawn here with three parts of three sample trajectories. In yellow, we have a periodic orbit. Um, in blue, uh, we have an orbit that appears to be approaching the, the, the stable limit cycle. And in green, we have another orbit that appears to be approaching it. Um, a first return map or a Poincaré map, to find one, we start by defining a section that is transverse to the flow, meaning that the flow is not along the direction of the section. Um, it's at, at least somewhat transverse to it. And I'm naming this section sigma. And the map I'm going to create, the Poincaré map, is going to be a map from sigma to itself. And what this map is going to tell us is um, if we start at some point on this map and we run forward in time, where will we next intersect this map? If this green trajectory is intersecting sigma for the kth time at this point, uh, well, we learn it intersects it for the k plus first time, at this next point. And so if this initial point is some point in the phase space x sub k, and this next point is x sub k plus 1, this is a map that sends x sub k to x sub k plus 1. So the Poincaré map of x sub k maps it to this point x sub k plus 1. And um, for another example, if we start here, uh, and the Poincaré map will map this black point to uh, the point here. And um, if we start right on um, the limit cycle that we've drawn, the Poincaré map will map this particular point right back to the limit cycle. So it's a map from sigma to sigma. And it's telling us what happens to points basically after one rotation um, through our flow. So we can think of our Poincaré map as mapping from sigma to sigma, and it took um, a point that was on the limit cycle back to that same point. And for a point that was a little bit off the limit cycle, um, it actually brought it closer to the limit cycle. And so from this, we can see that this particular limit cycle is actually stable because after one time through the Poincaré map, um, points have gotten closer to the point of the limit cycle. And um, we want to mathematize this. We want to be able to maybe write down the Poincaré map or compute it numerically and use that to determine the stability of a limit cycle and perhaps even use that to find a limit cycle in the first place. So we have a map. It's a map from the, from the curve sigma to the curve sigma. And it takes points on this curve to um, the Poincaré map of these points. And that, that mapping is we integrate forward in time by, uh, by one rotation and see where we've returned to the, to the, um, to the curve. Um, if we happen to have a point that maps to itself, that point is a fixed point of the map. And it's a limit cycle of the original flow. So uh, basically, we have a flow, and we think we're near some periodic objects. And so we've built this corresponding mapping. And we can look for fixed points of the mapping to help us actually identify limit cycles of the flow. And in addition, we can study this mapping to identify the stability of these limit cycles. To think about the stability of our limit cycle, we want to start at some point on sigma that's not so far from the, the point that corresponds to the limit cycle. And we just want to know, after we've gone through the Poincaré map, have we gotten closer or have we gotten further from um, the point that corresponds to the limit cycle? Uh, because we're quite close to the fixed point, to the point corresponding to the limit cycle, uh, we can use a Taylor expansion to approximate the map. The map is approximately um, the value of the map for, for the fixed point itself. And so we know this is actually just x star um, plus some derivative times um, our vector along this curve plus some 
extra correction term that's the order of the size of, of our perturbation squared, but we know our perturbation is small, and so we're going to neglect the square term because it's quite small. So in summary, uh, the Poincaré map of our fixed point plus this small perturbation is equal to the location of the original fixed point plus uh, this object over here. And if this object is closer to, um, to the fixed point than the original V was, uh, then it's a stable fixed point. Uh, things are getting closer on each uh, pass through the map. And if this is um, longer than V, if we've actually gotten further away, then we have an unstable fixed point. Uh, limit cycles are, uh, sorry, periodic orbits, ah, uh, spiraling orbits are diverging away from the limit cycle uh, over time. And so we really care about the size of this object relative to the size of V because we care whether it is growing in size or decaying in size. To think about whether this object is uh, growing or decaying, um, we actually, we just need the eigenvalues of this derivative matrix. And in this particular setting, in the map setting, these eigenvalues are referred to as flow K multipliers. And we don't care about whether they're negative or positive. That's not the thing we're interested in. We're interested in whether this matrix is contracting this vector or expanding this vector. And so we actually want to comp compare the flow K multipliers to one. So we ask the question, is the magnitude of these greater than one or is the magnitude of these less than one? And um, if all of them have magnitude less than one, then uh, we will be being pushed closer to our limit cycle. And if one of them has magnitude greater than one, then we'll be being pushed away uh, in that particular direction.